Welcome back everyone, Dustin here again, Average Guy Hi-Fi with another long overdue video here, so I apologize about the delay. Um, kind of been just enjoying the, the weather we've been having and been pretty busy at work, so we'll just jump right into it. As you can see here, I've got another speaker review for you guys. So these are actually uh, Vienna Acoustic Webern speakers, and they're spelled W-E-B-E-R-N, but that's actually an Austrian um, composer from way back. So Vienna Acoustics does something pretty cool if you're familiar with their lineup. They're actually an Austrian company as well too, but they name a lot of their speakers after composers, uh, Beethoven, Mozart, kind of the list goes on and on. So that's where these speakers got their name. But these are a um, sealed bookshelf speaker, I guess is what you would call them. I'm imagining a lot of people out there mounted these kind of flanking um, flat screen TVs, things like that on the wall because they do come with um, a really nice wall bracket actually. So you guys can see right there, it kind of has the logos and all that stuff on there. So this company is, the reason I have, I've already reviewed a few of their speakers, Vienna Acoustics. I just love the love the brand, but Magnolia Hi-Fi, when they had their independent shops, uh, used to sell a, quite a bit of this brand. So my market, because we have Magnolia Hi-Fi, kind of gets flooded. So that's why you guys will kind of notice um, in your own individual markets, I would look up companies that are kind of, um, that were being sold at the, the kind of the bigger box stores or um, kind of boutique home audio stores. Um, and that's why Definitive Technology and Vienna Acoustics is a little bit more um, prevalent in this market compared to a lot of other markets out there anyway. Um, but again, these speakers here are kind of designed to be bookshelf. I actually have this one, um, comes with the stand. So it's sitting on it right here, kind of show you there. So I, I bought the three speakers. The MSRP pricing on these is $795 each. So they're not a cheap speaker by any means. I ended up picking up this whole package. So uh, three, three Veburns, uh, the three wall brackets, and then I bought the stand separately because I wanted to, I didn't have anywhere to mount it on my wall or anything. So I have about $660 invested in these, which is just a phenomenal deal. Um, they all came with the, the matching grill, which is kind of right here. This kind of your basic plastic. They do a nice little touch there if I can get it to show, but they do like the Vienna Acoustics has a lot of nice little uh, touches when it comes to their speakers and everything. Um, they're dual six inch woofers right here, mid range. Uh, and then it comes with a one inch silk dome tweeter. Kind of spin this around. Again, that's the one that I've been using as my center channel. I've actually had these speakers for quite some time now, um, about a year I would say. I just use them whenever you guys know I'm buying speakers, I'm listening to them, and then I'm selling them uh, for basically what I paid for them and everything. So I've been listening to these speakers for about that year. I just like them because of their looks. I love the sound and how compact they were. These were easy enough for me to uh, put into place once I'm kind of swap uh, testing out speakers and it's easy enough just to get them swapped back in uh, into place. So um, again, I've been using them as the center channel, the left and right, kind of my mainstay uh, system for about a year. Love the sound of them. Very high quality company. It's one of those companies when you get their products in hand, you notice that they have a very high attention to detail. They have a 91 uh, dB sensitivity. The frequency response, they say goes down to about 60 Hertz to about 25 uh, kilohertz. The impedance is four ohms. They're about uh, 20 inches tall, about uh, 10 and a half inches uh, this direction, depending on the orientation. Because again, a lot of people will mount these on walls, vertical or you can have it as the horizontal as well too. About uh, 10 and a half inches wide and only about three and a half inches deep. So this measurement. So they're actually pretty compact. They weigh about 16 and a half pounds each as well too. So they have aluminum cabinets. Um, they have a, a one inch silk dome tweeter, two uh, six inch woofers that are clear. Let's see if I can show you guys this. It's kind of one of their signatures. You can kind of see the inside of the speaker right there but clear woofers. Another thing that too, that I didn't really like about these speakers, but you can see where they mounted the um, binding posts, really high quality binding posts. They all have serial numbers and everything on them. But if you put these uh, left and right, you guys will see when I'm showing you the demo uh, up here next, but that positioning of the uh, speaker terminals, I'm sure it's you know something to do with their industrial design and things like that. And you can tuck it away, but if you have banana plugs, that actually sticks out quite a bit. Um, just so you guys can get an idea there. So that's kind of the rundown. It's an Austrian company, uh, very high quality. Uh, just love their products anytime. I definitely have my searches set up. So if something pops up on 
Facebook Marketplace, um, offer up things like that that are Vienna the Acoustics, then I'm monitoring that and checking things out. I just missed out on a pair of Mozarts uh, the other day that I really wanted to try for my two-channel system. But anyway, that's a little bit of a rundown. These Weberns are, uh, most people call them Weberns. <laughs> you know, if you're in the U.S. like I am, um, I've just been doing some research on these speakers and I came across that um, it's actually pronounced Webern. So there you go. So let's pop over there. We'll take a look at the demo. I'll let you guys listen to these things. Again, uh, I just use these demo videos just to kind of give you guys, I'm going to get copyright strike one of these days, but I just show you guys how um, they kind of sound in my room. But again, the only real reason or the only real way to truly test speakers is listen to yourself. So I'm always trying to encourage people to do that. I just think that little demo um, gives you guys a little bit of a break in the videos. And then we'll pop back over here and I'll give you guys the average guy hi-fi score. So stay tuned. All right, everyone, we got the uh, three Webern speakers all set up here, um, calibrated and everything. Again, these are my mainstays. So this is how my living room usually looks um, when I'm not testing out other speakers or when I'm in between speakers. So uh, it actually looks pretty good. You know, it's uh, very kind of clean looking speakers. I usually have them on stands, but I got rid of the stands a little while ago. So I've just been using them angled towards the main listening position uh, right here. But here we go. Here's a demo, uh, Matrix 4K, the lobby scene. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that brief demo. Just love the way those speakers sound. I really like the way they look. And it's going to be sad. You know, as you guys know, this channel is me buying speakers, testing them out, and then selling them from what I paid for them, try to give back to the local community here. So I'll be listing these things for $660, and somebody's going to get a really good deal on them. I'll be very sad to see them go. They've been a really nice filler this past year uh, for being able to put them in place after I've uh, pulled my system apart, sold speakers, brought them back in. They've been kind of my mainstay, and I've enjoyed my time with them. But I'm already starting, my brain's already starting to think about what I'm going to spend that $660 on for the next set of speakers here. So we'll see. I guess that'll have to stay tuned. I think that's the reason a lot of people like this channel. So now we're on to my um, overall view of the overall review of the speakers, basically. This is where I give you guys um, my thoughts and impressions on them. And we go off five categories. So there's quality, we go off the sound, we go off the MSRP pricing, we go off the aesthetics, and we go off my price paid. Each category is worth up to 10 points. Uh, and then we average those out and give you guys the average guy hi-fi score. So we'll just jump right into it from a um, quality standpoint. Uh, like the Schoenberg and the Berg speakers that I previously reviewed, I just love the quality of these Vienna acoustic speakers. Any Vienna acoustic speaker I've ever owned has always done a very good job um, kind of letting you know that they're high quality right out of the box or right out of the trunk wherever you end up picking them up at. And these are no exception. The metal cabinets, the high quality binding posts, the high quality uh, woofers, tweeters, the whole package. I mean, even down to the the wall brackets, everything kind of oozes quality. Nine out of 10, about as good as you can get on my channel when it comes to um, quality. Very good job, Vienna Acoustic. 
sound, I gave him an eight and a half. I'm try I was trying to like I did a lot of listening to these speakers and I've owned a lot of different speakers. So I was trying to come up with a brand that maybe was most similar, and I think my brain tells me Aperion Audio. Um, or Bowers and Wilkins. Those are the two that are kind of standing out here. I and mean, I think it's that uh, that silk dome tweeter that they use. I know Bowers and Wilkins doesn't use that, but uh, Aperion Audio does. And it really does, um, it's got a nice smooth high. Uh, I, you, would, you wouldn't kind of call these harsh. I'm sitting next to a speaker that a lot of people would consider harsh. By the way, these aren't. These are very, very flat sounding speakers, even though they're clips. And that's kind of the craze these days. Um, but they have a really nice high um, detailed airy, um, just beautiful sounding speakers. Really good for movies, video games, but they're not as energetic is kind of the nice way of putting it or harsh uh, as some kind of brands like Definitive Technology, Klipsch, things like that. These are just um, excellent mid bass. You definitely need a subwoofer with them. They only go down to about 60 hertz and even that's probably, I, I, I believe it, 60 hertz is probably reasonable in room, uh, but you need a subwoofer and that's what these were designed to be used with so make sure uh, you factor that in I'm just giving you guys the sound of these speakers in general um, just very good sounding speakers again nice detailed highs uh, not real harsh or anything like that um, good mid bass just easy to listen to you can put these things on and listen to them all day and they're not gonna they're not gonna bother you which is a really good sign of a well-designed speaker eight and a half out of ten when it comes to sound MSRP I gave them a seven and a half no doubt about it uh, creeping up there, $800, $795 uh, a speaker is not cheap. You know that it's not cheap, though, when you own them and you pick them up and you hook them up and you listen to them. But that's still on the expensive side uh, when there's brands out there like Bowers & Wilkins, like Definitive Technology, that had some really nice speakers around that $800 a piece range. That would have been pretty fair competition. So these are the lowest mark here. Um, but that doesn't reflect the quality. The quality is definitely up there, um, but again, the competition is pretty steep once you kind of get up to that uh, $800 a piece range when it comes to speakers. So seven and a half out of 10. The aesthetics, I give them a nine and a half. I mean, I just think they're beautiful. They've got uh, kind of an industrial look. Uh, they go very well flanking uh, flat screen TVs or better yet, ideally you would mount them on the wall where you'd have the the left speaker, the right speaker, and then the center channel mounted on the wall directly below it. Uh, I think that that's probably your best bet if you own these, and I think that's probably what most people did with them. You probably won't find too many dedicated theaters with Weberns um, all across them. They would work uh, as, long, if, as long as you have subwoofers, but I don't think that's what they're really designed for. More of that uh, beautiful look, uh, metal cabinet, modern, sleek, minimalist styling, uh, goes in living rooms and things like that, like my room over there. So nine and a half out of 10 when it comes to aesthetics. I like to look, but that's probably one of the most subjective categories that there is besides sound. Uh, my price paid, I gave them an eight and a half out of 10. I got all three speakers uh, for $660. Now, full disclosure, I did end up paying $200 for that center channel speaker stand, uh, but that's factored into that $660. So I got all three speakers, all three wall mounts, all three covers, and the matching center channel stand for $660. And just one speaker, if you went into Magnolia back in the day when they were selling these, would it cost you $795 plus tax? So a very good deal. Somebody's going to get a killer deal with these. And again, they might sit in my closet for a little while before I get rid of them because I like them that much. But uh, if I list them, I'll list them for $660. And then again, I'm trying to give back to the community. And my brain's already starting to think about, hey, what am I going to spend that um, $660 on for the next set of speakers? What am I going to be reviewing next? And I think that's why this channel is working is because you guys don't really know what's around the corner. I've got some stuff that really I'm really excited to review for you. I still have to do the, the Luxman review and the Monolith 5, but those are going to be coming up. So back to the score. We had a 9 out of 10 when it comes to quality, 8.5 out of 10 when it comes to sound, 7.5 out of 10 when it comes to the MSRP pricing, 9.5 out of 10 when it comes to the aesthetics, 8.5 out of 10 when it comes to my price paid. That is 43 out of 50, which is an 86% average guy hi-fi score. So very good marks for these speakers. Uh, I think that they would just do fantastic in living rooms, things like that. Dedicated theaters, probably better or something a little bit, uh, a little bit larger uh, that has a little bit um, more sensitive. I mean, 91 dB is sensitive, but you want something that kind of throws that sound out there a little bit bigger for just dedicated theaters, you know, like the JTRs of the world, big stuff like that. But for just living room setups, you can use those in theaters, but you need big subwoofers to augment them. That's going to be for sure. But these days, everybody uses big subwoofers no matter what in a big theater. So 
86% average guy hi-fi score. Pretty big score. I put the speaker, this is a clip uh, KL650THX. If you guys follow this channel, you know that this is kind of what my dream system is. I was planning on building these out um, if I ever can afford to buy a house. Uh, this real estate market's crazy. Um, I was planning on doing five of these as my, my um, kind of base system, the left, right, center, right, surround, left, surround, and then kind of build around that. But I think my plans kind of change. But before I get rid of them, I'm wondering if you guys would like me to run these up against the uh, Klipsch RP, uh, RP600Ms that are right here behind me uh, in a two-channel setup, just kind of showing you the comparison there. If you like that, just leave a comment below and let me know. Otherwise, these will be sold, and I'll be putting that money back towards uh, some more speakers for myself. Uh, again, this is the type of channel that I, I do. I'm trying to pick stuff up on the used market. Sometimes I buy it new, like that monolith amp, things like that. But um, giving you guys just my honest impressions, I'm using my money to buy this stuff. So I think it's kind of translating. 5, 000, over 5,000 subscribers the first year. Things keep growing. So I'm just very, very happy uh, if you guys are follow along. Uh, you've been helping support my channel by commenting, hitting the like button, things like that. So truly appreciate it. It's been a great year, and I've been happy to have you guys along for the ride. My name is Dustin, and the name of the channel is Average Guy Hi-Fi.